Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And look, I did a little bit of a makeover. I am notorious for kind of always changing my space around, but I wanted to do like a little like fall makeover. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So today's video is actually inspired by my September favorites video. If you remember in that video, I was talking about Casa Rex and how I really love some of their products and I really loathe some of their other products. So I thought it'd be fun to do a video combining both the best and worst products from Casa Rex parentheses in my opinion and I can't stress that enough you know this is just my opinion this is just good fun if some of the products that I say are the worst but you love them they work for you don't worry about it everybody's different everybody has an opinion so if you guys are so ready to find out what in my opinion are the best and worst products give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started <music> Let's start with a best product. This is Casa Rex Full Fit Propolis Synergy Toner. First of all, Propolis, I love. Second of all, toner, I love. Like, can you see the hearts in my eyes right now? This is 72% of Propolis in here, plus some honey extract. I kind of expected this to be kind of a thick, jelly-like uh, kind of toner. And really the texture's not that, it's, very watery, it's very runny. It's a very like 50-50 kind of toner, 50% hydration and 50% moisture. So balancing. And what really like, they nailed this texture in my opinion. They really nailed the fact that it's not sticky. It's not sticky, it's not greasy, it's not oily on top of your skin. You know, it just sinks in really, really nicely in a very light wearing layer. And yet it's packing this propolis punch. This is like really one of my favorite products from Casa Rex. Truly the best of the best. That's why I'm starting off with it. It hydrates my skin, moisturizes my skin, brings that propolis glow, and it's super sensitive skin friendly. They also have a serum in this line. This is the Full Fit Propolis Light Ampule. Now, first things first, I really dislike the name of this product just because I think it's misleading. I really wouldn't categorize this serum as being light in texture. It's more of a thicker medium weight gel type of texture. You know, it spreads into the skin really nicely and absorbs great. I find it slightly misleading in the name, but that aside, I think this is an excellent product, especially if you love Propolis. This is 83% of Propolis and I mean, it's a very high amount. It's a super minimal ingredients list. I mean, they're really just focusing on Propolis as the star ingredient here. And it really is, you know, it calms and soothes the skin. It brings that moisture that Propolis brings to the skin without being super like heavy and occlusive, right? This just has that really nice balancing property to it, protective um, property to it. It reduces redness on the skin. It's pretty good for acne prone skin as well. Like all around my skin just really drinks this one up. It's a really pleasing, very, again, medium weight type of moisturizing Propolis serum. So a little bit of a misleading name, but honestly, if you love your Propolis, you definitely got to give this one a try. Let's move on to a worst product. And this is the Centella Aqua Soothing Ampule. And really my take on this is just that it was very, very disappointing. A very promising product on paper. This uses some of my favorite ingredients, Centella, Metacassicide, Panthenol. It claims to really hydrate and soothe sensitive skin. And on paper, you know, that ingredients list definitely checks out this is a fragrance free product no essential oils no alcohols in here like it is a very minimal ingredients list and yet it really didn't do anything for me and that's why I was really disappointed by it because I expected a lot and hey you know hydrating and soothing serums maybe not the most exciting skincare out there but if you know me I can get pretty excited about hydration and soothing some of the most basic skincare products are my favorite and this just doesn't make the cut, you know? It's a very watery, very thin, I mean like this texture would work for every skin type, but for me, I like my serums to have a little bit more oomph in the texture, a little bit more body yaddy to them, maybe even a little bit more moisture. And this is just so thin, I actually, I always like say this, I, I kind of feel like if this product was packaged as a toner and they made this the Centella Soothing Aqua Toner, I'd probably give it a more favorable review, but it feels very, very lackluster as a serum. 
didn't really reduce redness, didn't really soothe my skin. While it is hydrating, it's not hydrating enough. Like it really fails on the aqua claim, the soothing claim. Like it really is just a very basic, very boring <laughs> product and it definitely disappointed me. Next up, a best product, the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. Oh yes, this is probably the most popular and probably the best selling product from Cosrx. This is truly their calling card. This is the product that put them on the map and made them known internationally. And there's a really good reason to that because it's just an excellent product. So we've got 96% of snail mucin. And as you guys know, I mean, this is really an all in one kind of ingredient. So many benefits for the skin. It's anti-aging, it's anti-inflammatory, it's got antioxidants accident protection. It's a great wound healer. So it's really fantastic for acne prone skin. It's a great hydrator for the skin. It's barrier supportive. Like there are so many reasons to love snail in your skincare routine. And this is really one of the best choices because it's a very minimal ingredients list. So sensitive, skin friendly. I mean, there's no fragrances in here, no essential oils, no drying alcohols, nothing weird happening in here. And the textures, I think really pleasing. This, it just really feels like a nice cooling and hydrating gel on the skin. Sinks in really nicely and it's really not sticky or tacky on the top at all. This will play so well in your skincare routine. I mean, it's just such a pleasing texture overall. A great ingredients list with a high amount of snail. I mean, this bottle is also huge, so it's gonna last you for a really long time. Who could ask for more? Speaking of snail, I really think that their snail peptide eye cream is a best product from Cosrx. This has 72% of snail uh, secretion filtrate plus five different peptides. And I've talked about this eye cream a lot on my channel. It really is one of my favorite eye creams with some really proven peptides. And what I really like about it, well, it's a couple of things. The texture, it is a lightweight but moisturizing eye cream that sinks in really nicely. Again, we've got that characteristic snail stringiness but with really good absorbency and no stickiness at the top. It's a really nice, um, really nice lightweight moisture around around the eye area. It's like not greasy, it's not heavy. And what I also love about it is that it shows results. You know, I noticed that my eye area was looking a lot more awake, a little bit more brightened, a little bit more lifted. I love to see those types of effects with eye creams. This one definitely impressed me and I think it is a really excellent eye cream at a really affordable price. Let's talk about a worst product. This is the AHA BHA Clarifying Treatment Toner. And this is another one of those products that just sounds really good, but just doesn't live up to expectations. You know, this is the type of product that I feel like, you know, you read the name and you're like AHA and BHA, this is gonna solve all of my like exfoliation woes because I'm getting the best of both worlds in one product. And yeah, it just it, it just falls really short. You know, they're just using really low amounts of the AHA and BHA. So they're using betaine salicylate and glycolic acid, and they're using it in 0.1% respectively for both ingredients. And it's just like, I'm not really a power queen when it comes to exfoliants and acids and things like that, but that's still pretty low in my opinion. And then you start to look a little bit further into the product and you realize that it's using 10% of like apple water. It's just so incredibly gentle. That doesn't make it a bad product, but I think that it makes the name just a little bit like over promising for what it can do for the skin. It's just too weak to give you really good exfoliation. This is really a great booster product though. You know, I must admit, this is something you can use alongside of your other AHA and BHA products as something to kind of just like boost up the power, really prep your skin to receive, you know, your chosen uh, chemical exfoliant. It can work in that way. Not everybody needs that type of product. Not everybody wants to fuss around with multiple different products, you know, for their exfoliation routine. So, you know, I think people who need something really, really gentle that they can use every single day with very low expectations for the amount of exfoliation it can do for your skin, this could, you know, certainly have a role to play in your skincare routine. But if you're gonna look at this product as like, it's gonna solve all my exfoliation issues, it's not, it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let's talk best. This is the B5D Panthenol Cream. So this features 10% of Panthenol, which is an ingredient that I'm like super obsessed about. You know, it's really great for everybody's skin, really. It's a very barrier supportive ingredient. We tend to know it as a soothing ingredient. It is very skin soothing, but it also brings a good amount of hydration and it is a fantastic ingredient, like one of the ingredients to know if you suffer from dehydration or barrier issues because it's one of the ingredients that can really help stimulate your skin to produce more lipids and lipids are fantastic for really helping to hug hydration into the skin. Really important part of your moisture barrier. So panthenol is definitely a goodie, right? And we've got 10% in this cream, which is a really good amount. I love the texture of this because this is something that I call like kind of like a plain cream or like comfort cream. You know, it isn't really like uh, super sexy. It's not like really, really rich and emollient. It's not like really, really hydrating. It's actually just like a very straightforward, medium weight type of cream. It's got a good amount of moisturization to it without any greasiness or shininess. It's got a good amount of protective occlusivity to fight dehydration plus 10% of panthenol makes it a really good one for dehydrated skin or more combination, slightly more on the dry side skin. I think we'll enjoy this the most, maybe a little bit too heavy for oily skin, but like I said, it's a really basic kind of straightforward type of moisturizer featuring a high amount of a fantastic ingredient. And uh, like I, I said it before too, like I get excited about really basic straightforward skincare and this is one of the products I get excited about. I do want to feature another moisturizer as a best from COSRX, their Moisture Power Enriched Cream. This features ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids. We've also got a touch of panthenol in here and propolis, like, okay, hearts in the eyes right really really good ingredients list and honestly I really fell for this one because of how it makes my skin feel but it's a really interesting cream because as you put it on it feels like it's hydrating the skin plumping the skin but then you've got that really wonderful comforting nourishment that really deep moisture that just feels so so good especially if you do have a little bit more drier areas on your face it feels amazing and yet it doesn't feel heavy it doesn't feel super thick thick. You know, I've tried really nourishing creams that just feel like a layer sitting on top of my skin. This just has some of the best like absorbency, some of the best feeling on the skin. And I truly feel like my skin just feels really plumped up from it. It's hard to explain, but I just absolutely love how it feels on my skin. I love how it protects my skin from dehydration. I like the ingredients list a lot. I think it's definitely a winner, especially if you like a little bit more nourishment from your cream without getting too rich or too shiny at the top. All right, let's go back to the worst. <laughs> this is the uh, Casa Rex Water Toner to Cream, and oh my God, I hate this product. All right, let me tell you what this is. This is a product that claims to be a toner and a moisturizer in one product. This is really not like a toner to cream, but more like a cream to toner to cream. <laughs> And as you work it into your skin, it's so strange. It melts down and it feels like water. It really does feel like water on your skin. And then it dries down to this like very light occlusive like layer on the skin that's really trying to hug, right? The hydration into your skin. And for me, this just, it just did not work either way. And that's really where I land with a lot of two-in-one products. As a toner, yeah, it feels watery and it's like a really cool trick on the skin, the way the cream turns into these like water droplets. You can like visibly see it turn into water, which is insanely cool and interesting. But on my skin, it's not really doing anything. As a moisturizer, I didn't, even though it does have an occlusivi occlusivity to it, it's got some silicones in it that make it feel really silky and really kind of creates that protective layer. It's just not enough. It's just not enough for my skin. So maybe it just doesn't jive with my skin type, but I just think that it's it's just a weird product and I had a hard time layering it in my into my skincare routine because the texture is kind of odd and um, it's got essential oils in it. I clearly tested this a long time ago before I really linked, you know, skin sensitivity and essential oils um, for me personally. So it's got essential oils in it too, which I think is a downgrade in my opinion. Just Overall, it just doesn't work in either area. It's a very interesting concept, but the execution of this product was just, 
a major fail in my opinion. Going back to best products, this is the ultimate honey moisturizing overnight mask. I love the name, but I don't love the name. <laughs> I love the name because it's like ultimate honey overnight moisturizing. Like it's all words that I love put together into one product. However, it is a very misleading name because it says honey mask and there's no honey in this product. I've talked about this before, but it sure does get on my nerves. It hasn't changed. It still annoys me. Um, this is, there's no honey in sight here. It's 87% uh, of propolis extract. So it's coming from the same source. They're both, you know, honeybee products, but they are slightly different. And I do find it a little bit misleading. But as we mentioned before, propolis is excellent for your skin. It's just fabulous. And I really like the texture of this because I like to use my sleeping masks over my moisturizer and not all textures work for that. Sometimes they're almost like too creamy. It's this really nice thick gel texture, but it just really melts into your skin really nicely. And it's got such a great occlusive to it without being heavy, without being like really greasy or even like ointment like, like I just find it very breathable, really um, wearable, just really pleasing texture. I can see it working for almost all skin types. I can see this working really well as a moisturizer because it's got that lock it down kind of quality that keeps your skin protected and really just finishes off your skincare beautifully, a high amount of propolis. You know, when I use this one, it really fights dehydration, which is my main concern with sleeping masks. It really fights dehydration. It keeps my skin plump and hydrated all night long. And you know, while I don't notice like a huge brightening or glowy effect with this one, I definitely feel like I get healthier skin when I use it. This is a long time, many year favorite for mine. It's one of the most affordable sleeping masks, I think, that you can pick up. And it's really just it's really a gem so even though the name is a little bit misleading you know what I love propolis as an ingredient I would have bought it if they called it the overnight propolis mask you know you don't have to bank in on honey propolis is an excellent ingredient and um, if you haven't tried it I definitely think you might want to give this one a go. Let's go back to some worse products. These are the shield fits sunscreens. Oh man do I have a lot to say about these. <laughs> I really dislike these. I've definitely shared in the past how much I've disliked these products. And um, I will put the warning out there, both of these products do contain essential oils. I did try these out prior to going essential oil free. Like I said, these are long-term dislike products. That's not really why I dislike them though, I must admit. So let's start off with the mineral sunscreen. Um, it definitely leaves a white cast, right? So I don't like that at all. And um, it is definitely one of the mineral sunscreens that really just dries the living daylights out of my skin. Where I really ended up on this one, because the mineral one is, you know, the snail one is so much worse than the mineral one, and we'll get to that one in a second. The mineral one is like fine, but honestly, there's just so much more innovation going on in mineral sunscreens in Korean skincare that this is just such an average product. All right, let's move on to the Snail Sun Essence. It's the chemical sunscreen. I'm like, where do I start? Because my laundry list of issues with this sunscreen is so stinking long. Um, it does contain essential oils. So let's just keep that in our back pocket, right? Like I don't want to make that the focus of why I don't like this. And it's really not the focus of why I don't like this. But let's just keep that in our back pocket as some knowledge about this alcohol, drying alcohol. We definitely have it pretty high up on the list and you can really smell it. There's a really strong alcohol smell to this one. So again, another thing to keep in your back pocket, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I mean, I'd rather find alcohol in sunscreens than in any other skincare products because alcohol definitely can help your sunscreen dry down faster, which is really important because who the heck has 20 minutes to spare for their sunscreen to dry down before they go outside or put their makeup on or whatever, right? Like it's a pain in the butt. So um, I, as, even though my skin doesn't really like alcohol generally, that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate its function in skincare. And in a sunscreen, it can definitely make a difference. So again, something to keep in your back pocket. The filters. Oh, the filters filters. You know, you always hear me talk about when I review sunscreens, I'm generally talking about new generation chemical filters, right? They're bigger and better. They protect your skin. They've got more protection from the sun and they have less potential for irritating the skin, right? They're everything old generation filters aren't. 
So Cosrx chose to use all old generation filters like Avo Benzone. Like why? Why? I actually have a theory about this, but let me just ask one more time. Why? New generation chemical filters can't be sold um, in the US market. It, it, they can't be sold because they're not approved. Not because there's anything wrong with them, but it's just so incredibly hard to get anything new approved. So it's just like not even worth it, right? Anyways, I think they just really wanted to sell this in stores in the USA. And that's why they went the route that they went. But it is definitely disappointing because like I said before, there's so many options in K-Beauty that are really innovative. This feels like multiple steps backwards and it definitely does not push this to the top of the list when it comes to really excellent sunscreen choices. And um, this stinks. Like it smells super duper nasty. D O M G. And I cannot remind you enough that I tried this when I was using fragrances and essential oils in my skincare routine. This is pre fragrance free journey for me. And I was super turned off by it because it is just like a really nasty, funky, and just, I just can't even. Like, first, it smells like alcohol. You get a real strong alcohol hit. And then it smells like pine trees. Like, it kind of smells like men's deodorant. It's got a very, like, masculine, very woodsy kind of scent to it that is very strong and that lingers. Like, I just don't want that on my face, under my nose for any amount of time. On top of that, you know, this is a sunscreen that definitely irritated my skin. <laughs> so, like, pretty much immediately it made my skin just tingle and burn and just feel really raw and yucky. Was it the essential oils? I don't know. Was it the alcohol? I don't know. Was it the chemical filters? I don't know. There's such a long list of potential culprits that like, who can say exactly what it was? I think this is just a bad sunscreen. I really dislike it. I can't recommend it. And it really smells bad. And let's end on a positive note. This is a best product, the Acne Pimple Master Patch. And what I really like about these is, you know, they do suck up the gunk. They have really good sucking power. They can hold a pretty good amount of gunk. You know, there are some that are really thin that you have to change out pretty frequently because they don't hold a lot of gunk, of pus right? They just don't hold a lot of liquid, but these hold a, a pretty good amount, I would say, and they have really good adherence. This is like my main gripe. I've said it so many times with pimple patches because sometimes they just fall off or they end up in your hair when you're sleeping or like you find them on the carpet and your dog is chewing on them. That's never happened before. I don't know where that came from. They are dirt cheap. You know, some pimple patches, they can be really expensive. And you're like, oh, I feel like I'm paying like a dollar a patch. It's ridiculous. Like you can use these with Abandon because they're always on sale. They're super duper affordable, great adherence. They suck up the gunk. What more do you need? I mean, these are definitely a staple in my acne care game. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video as always. And I am curious to know, like what's your favorite and least favorite product from Cosrx? Let me know in the comment box below. And let me know, did you enjoy this kind of like video topic? Cause I'm thinking I can probably do some more brands in the future. Cause it's actually really fun to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly sometimes. If you love the video, but you haven't hit subscribe, subscribe yet, don't go yet. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I release two new skincare focus videos every single week, sometimes three videos a week and um, turn on the notification so you don't miss out when the new videos drop. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world. And I can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye.